last and hardest part about lipids comes in the mechanisms of terpenes. Now, I don't know how in depth they're going to go with this this semester, but in the year I took it, which was almost three years ago, they had like 20 different practice terpene synthesis, or not synthesis, mechanism questions. And I'm going to run through a couple of them because there was one in last year's final, so I think at least the bare bones of one of these might show up on, the, on your final. Now, the way most of these terpene mechanisms work is somewhere on your terpene you're going to see OPP, an oxygen pyrophosphate. And, well, actually just pyrophosphate. Now, the nice thing about pyrophosphate is all you need to know about it is that it is a very, very good leaving group. This is what it looks like, but what it does is it leaves, and it leaves behind a positive charge. So what you can think of happening is when this leaves, this carbon would, be, would become positive. Okay. Now, usually there's something kicking it out, but for explanation purposes, I'm going to just look at it from that one first step. If this leaving group pops off, it's taking the bonds electrons from this carbon, so that carbon ends up becoming positive. And so you would have a double bond here that's unchanged. You have the carbons going around like that. You have this double bond unchanged. But now you have a plus charge right on that tertiary carbon. Now look at what you're trying to make. We want to make a five-membered, uh, five, six-membered ring. And notice the position of this double bond. It has somehow become, it has somehow moved over here. We'll consider it from the point of view by, of resonance. If this double bond were to resonate down like that to that bond, the positive would now end up on this carbon, and the double bond would end up in the position we want it to be. So we draw our resonance arrow, and we have double bond, carbon chain, double bond here now, and this carbon is positive. Now our goal is to make a six-membered ring. We need something with electrons to attack that positive charge and connect this carbon to that carbon, because if we did that, we'd make the six-membered ring. We can basically say, well, this carbon right here must be this carbon because it's connected to the isopropyl group, these two methyls, and here they are over there. So I need this carbon over here to attack that carbon. Where can the electrons to allow that to happen come from? The double bond it's attached to. And so most terpene mechanisms involve a double bond attacking a positive charge. And so what can happen is this double bond will use its electrons to attack that carbon that's positive over there, giving you two single bond now. We've made the six-membered ring. This double bond is where we left it. And so we've made the six-membered ring. But there's one thing you have to consider. If this double bond was used to make the six-membered ring, this carbon lost its double bond and made a new bond to this carbon over here. But this carbon, the other member of the double bond over here, gave up that bond but got nothing in return. As a result, that carbon will now be positive, which is what we want because we're not done yet, right? We want a double bond there. How do we get a double bond there from a carbocation? Well, there's one last step. Some base comes in, and since we're in, we're, this is a biosynthesis reaction, this is, stuff, this is stuff that goes on in the body, usually your base and your acid is water. And so that water is going to pull off a proton from the side adjacent to the positive. So you, you basically have a positive charge that's one bookend. You need the other bookend to be where you want to form the other half of the double bond. I want the double bond to form between these two carbons. One bookend is the positive on that carbon. So the other bookend has to be the hydrogen on the carbon next door. So that base comes in, pulls off the hydrogen. The electrons from the carbon-hydrogen bond swing down to the bond between the two carbons. And that brings me to the double bond I want. So the two most recurring, or there are three things that are almost always going to happen in every terpene mechanism you draw. One, OPP being the leaving group comes off and makes your carbon positive. Step two, some kind of double bond attacking a positive charge to connect carbons. That will also generally almost always happen. Being very general there. And third of all, almost always you will be left with a carbocation, and to get rid of that you will form a double bond, like this. Okay. 
So here's another practice example of a terpene mechanism question. And so we're starting with the same material as the last question, but now we're turning it into this scarier looking thing. It doesn't look nearly the same, and quite so the same as this, as the last problem did. But let's go about this with two things first before we even start drawing arrows. The first thing is to try and identify carbons that are the same between the two structures. Start by noticing this carbon up here is just a methyl, it's sticking off of a methyl. And here we have just a methyl sticking out again. Most likely, this methyl and this methyl are the same carbons. So I could probably number those one and two and say, okay, well, these are the same. The other, thing, the other place that often stays the same other than the methyl are the bunny ears. We see two carbons like this sticking out. I'm gonna number those, let's say, we'll number this six, seven, and eight. Well, carbon six, seven, and eight are always gonna be a bunny ear together. There's very rarely a, a time where that changes. There are a couple of examples, but we'll worry about that later if we have to worry about it at all. But what I'm saying is that this is the bunny ears, that's probably the bunny ears over here too, six, seven, and eight. And now we see that six is connected to two by this chain, so I could say three, four, five, six. And if I go around this way or this way, well, I could have three, four, five, and then six, or three, four, five, and then six. Since I have it on the left, I'm just gonna match it up. So three, four, five, and then five is connected to six. And then we have seven, no, oh, not seven, nine, and 10. And we'll just say, well, we don't quite know where nine and 10 is yet, but I, I think, well, actually I think we do because 10 was connected to two, here's two, so this must be 10 and nine must be over here. And if we remember the last question, carbon five ended up connecting to nine to make a six number ring, and here we have a six number ring. So we've gone around and numbered all the carbons that we think are comparable. And that ends up being every carbon in the structure. Now let's start and try and approach this from a mechanism point, a, a, a mechanistic point of view. We know that one step won't always be the same no matter what. OPP is a good leaving group, and it's going to leave. And if it leaves, the carbon it's attached to will be left with a positive charge. So we have the methyl, the six carbons, the bunny ears, and then this double bond. Now this carbon on top, excuse me, is positive. And then there's still a double bond over here. Now in the last question, we needed to form a six member ring. And in this question, we also need to form a six-member ring. And generally, the way you form a six-member ring is the same through most of these questions. This double bond, or rather, this double bond resonates with the positive, and then this double bond attacks the carbon that would become positive as a result. Now, you can do what we did in the last question and draw the resonance structure first and then show this double bond attacking in two separate steps, or you can do it in, at once if you want to save time and paper. What you do is you show this double bond attacking this carbon, and as a result, this double bond shifts over to make room for it. And so you end up getting the same product as what we drew before, but now we have, we, we just kind of skipped a step. We didn't draw the resonance structure. So now I have a six-membered ring. This methyl is here. I moved a double bond over there. And now this carbon is positive. Why? Because when this double bond used its electrons to connect uh, five to nine, car carbon five gave up the double bond and made a new bond to carbon nine. Carbon six, however, lost the double bond and got nothing in return. So he is the one that becomes positive. Now let's see what we need to do next, because we're at the same point, but now this is very different from what we were dealing before with before. Last time we just had to make a carbon-carbon double bond and we were done. But this time we have an OH, we have this not being where it's supposed to be, what do we have to do? We'll notice something. We said that this is most likely carbon six. Let's number this around again so we can follow suit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the numbers that matter. What we see is that carbon six somehow ended up connected to carbon two. How can we make carbon two attack carbon six? Well, conveniently enough, carbon two is on a double bond and double bonds have electrons and we saw before if there's a positive charge, a double bond can attack it. So what we have to do is make this carbon-carbon double bond attack carbon six, where the positive is. And if we do that, what will we get? Well, carbon two would now be connected to the positive. 
well, to the carbon that was positive. So now I have the six-membered ring. Carbon five is still connected to carbon six, but now carbon six is connected to carbon two. Six still has its two methyls, so they're sticking out like that. And then I have the methyl carbon one sticking out on top. Now we have to figure out where the positive ends up again. So we look at the double bond between two and 10, and we say, hmm, well, two gave up its electrons to make a bond to six. And so here's the two six bond. So it lost the double bond, but made a new bond in return. So it should be neutral. Carbon 10, on the other hand, the other member of the double bond, gave up that double bond and got nothing in return. So carbon 10 must be the positive carbon. Okay, and now let's look. I have this, but I want this. So all the carbons are in the right spot. The only thing I'm missing is an OH. And like I was saying before for the last question, you're doing this in a biological setting, meaning there's always water floating around. And so an H2O molecule can easily come in and attack that positive carbon. So in this case, we're not forming a double bond, we're attaching an OH. And the easiest way to do that is rather than have the H2O deprotonate something, have the lone pairs of the oxygen attached to that carbon that's positive. And so you would end up getting Now remember, that water comes in as H2O, which means it's attached as H2O, so it's H2O positive, but then your last step is straightforward enough. All you have to do to finish this, this mechanism is to deprotonate. So another molecule of water will come in, grab that proton, neutralize your OH, and now you have the product that you wanted. You have that. Okay, so one thing that those are really aware of general trends and rules might notice is this step that we were talking about in the last mechanism, why, when this attacked here, why did we choose to make this, where the bond was over here and the carbocation was on the secondary, where we could have fused the double bonds electrons attacked here and connected it here so the carbocation was on the more stable position, right? Because tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary. Well, there are two good reasons for this. The first reason is it was a mechanism question and we showed you the product. And this is the only way to get to that product. If you did this, you'd never get the answer. And the less, the less cop out -y kind of answer, the more realistic reason is, again, if this is occurring in the body, you have enzymes that allow things to kind of go against the rules that we've set up for you when you're just letting things react as they please. Enzymes guarantee or can allow for the less stable product to preferentially be made, which means even though this is a less stable uh, carbocation, the enzyme guarantees it's formed most of the time. Whereas this, being the more stable carbocation, wouldn't be allowed to happen if that enzyme had a, if that enzyme has a say in it. Okay, so either you can reason it by the fact that this is the only way to get the answer, and so we showed you the product, you have to justify with arrows how we get that, even if it goes against a certain rule that you've been taught, or you can argue, well, body has enzymes, enzymes make weird things happen. And on that note of enzymes make weird things happen, let's do one more problem. So we're gonna still start from the same material, and I have to find the missing left hand, there it is. And I'm going to make the product look mostly similar to what we dealt with last time, but I'm going to change one thing, the position of the OH and the methyl, and that's the only thing I'm changing about this. Which means most of the steps of this, this mechanism are going to be the same. We see we need to form a six-membered ring, so the first step is still the same. No matter what you're doing, OPP gets kicked out, and you form the carbocation, And then the ring forms to give you the six member ring you want. And now this carbon over here is left positive as a result. This double bond is over here. So we have that now, and we need to form this again. Well, that step's gonna be mostly the same as well because we want these two carbons to be connected to this carbon over here. So that part of the mechanism is also the same. This will attack down 
this carbon over here, and this carbon would become positive as a result. And so you have now You would now have your six-membered ring with your methyls in the middle connected to there, and this carbon is positive. So the first couple of steps are exactly the same, but this is kind of odd, because before we were saying, well, this methyl must be this methyl over here, and this positive must be where the OH attaches to, but they somehow swap positions. And now, to explain why and how this happens, we have to go back to what we learned in Orgo 1. There was a special rule we learned about carbocations and the weird things they do to make themselves more stable. And that is hydride and methyl shifts. Carbocations have a tendency of looking to move to a position where they're more stable. And right now we have a secondary carbocation, but right next door is a quaternary carbon. And what we learned in the, for the second exam of the first semester is the fact that carbocations are very quick to shift positions with a methyl of a quaternary carbon because what that will do in turn, if we draw this arrow, is now we get the carbocation in the more stable position. Now, this itself isn't particularly great for the reason you don't want positives on bridgeheads, but let's ignore that for now. Let's just run with the question because the point is to justify how this is happening. And more than that is to point out the fact that methyl and hydride shifts can occur in these reactions. We haven't really talked about them much. Actually, no, we did for the first exam of this semester, so I take that back. But I digress. The point being, you have to remember that methyl and hydride shifts can occur. If you have a secondary carbocation, next to a tertiary carbon, a carbon with only one hydrogen on it, that hydrogen bond can switch positions with the carbocation, and now you have a tertiary carbocation, which is more stable. And in this example, since there are no hydrogens here, a methyl shifts the position, and now you have a tertiary carbocation, which is much better than secondary. And that, and that shift also justifies how we get the OH there. The water will attack that positive, So a water molecule would attack this positive, leaving you with your ring, methyls, this methyl, and now you have H2O positive, and now it's just a matter of deprotonating at that to give you the product you were asking for, where it's an OH. But that is probably the hardest kind of question they'll ask, and I don't even know if they're going to get to it this semester. So this last example, you may not even have to worry about. I'm just saying it here so you're aware of it. If you need to get a carbocation in a position that allows you to make a certain product, such that a hydrogen or a methyl have to switch, well, you can always justify it with a hydride or a methyl shift, given the proper setting. Um, some of the terpenes that I learned in my semester actually saw shifts further apart, where it was a 1-3 shift, where like you shifted a carbocation that was here to here, but I don't think you're going to run into that. So for now, I think all you have to worry about is if, the, if there's a carbocation that's a single bond away from either a methyl or a tertiary, sorry, a quaternary carbon or a tertiary carbon, it will swap positions with either a hydrogen or a methyl, assuming that gives you the final product or gets you closer to the final product. If it doesn't, then don't even consider it. But that's all I want to say on that.